Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome. We're glad that you've come here today. Uh, why is this significant about what's going on right now? What we're looking at is Matthew chapter 25, and what God and Jesus is telling us is what's going to happen at the end of our life. We see God who is focused in on not so much of what we do, but what drives what we do. And he, he, he equates in this passage our relationship to him and our relationship to other, others. Why does this all matter? What God is going to make it very simple that the end of life comes down to two directions. Uh, you can go to the right or to the left. You can be in the sheep goat or the sheep camp or the goat camp. So let's go ahead and we will dive right into this with sheep and goats at the end. Okay. This is a famous catcher um, who is also known for kind of quippy little sayings, you know, when. Uh, I think this is the guy who came up with the idea, uh, and it, it's not over till it's over, or it's not over till the fat lady sings, uh, or another one of his is, when you come to a fork of the road, take it. This guy's name is Yogi Bear, one of the best catchers in baseball in the United States. I know that not everywhere in the world uh, baseball is as popular, although in through South America and, and all the Americas it pretty much is. But he talks about uh, a fork in the road that you come to. Now, God is saying to us here today, there is an end where you can go left or you can go right. But one of them you're going to go to. And we call this the law. Uh, and so what Jesus wants to do is to tell us this is the way that life is going to end up. And that he's saying that he wants us to know there will be a separation of people at the end of time. Here's his word. When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all nations, and he will separate people from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. So, you know, life can be complex, or, and we can make it complex, but oftentimes Jesus gives us some simple understanding about the way that life works. Now, if you are familiar with something uh, called the Apostles' Creed, you see this in the Apostles' Creed where it says, when Jesus comes again on the earth, he will uh, judge the living and the dead. Uh, and that there, it's almost like everybody goes to court here, Okay. Now, again, I'm going to go back here and say this is what we call in the church law, okay? Now, I'm going to throw this in here right up front. Jesus came onto the earth to bring us grace and mercy, but yet this plays out in our life, and that's what we're looking at here with Matthew chapter 25, or that Jesus is bringing up for us that we go basically in two directions of life. Okay, so uh, what is significant? What, are, well, part of the significance is, is what's going on with the sheep and the goats. And what's going on with them is the sheep will not recognize their works and the goats will not recognize their works. And the whole issue is like, well, what did you do? So the king will choose those, say to those on his right, Come who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The first commandment says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And Jesus goes in to say, making it simple, I'm going to throw you in this second commandment, and that is, love your neighbor as yourself. Or in this circles around this church, we say, uh, love the people God puts in your life. Why not just leave it with one? Because if you get one down, everything's going to fall together in your relationships. 
The problem is with us as human beings is that what we try to do is we justify ourselves and we just try to make our relationship with God. And he's saying, okay, you have a relationship with me, but really your relationship with me will show up in your relationships with other people. So, um, if you love me, it's going to show up in your relationships. And particularly with what's going on with people who live on the margins of society. Those who are poor. And he's saying when you love those people who are poor, when you care about those who are sick, when you are concerned about those who are incarcerated, you are showing love to me. That is me. Now, I'm going to go back to the, the, that second point again here. That Jesus is saying that when he says you did these things, the people who did them are going to go, what? Huh? I don't, I don't remember uh, doing those things. I, uh, you know, uh, when did I see you? And then he's saying, look, when you were in relationship with other people and you showed them love and compassion, you were showing it to me. Why wouldn't they know? I would say to you, this is an identity issue. They do what they do because of who they are, the sheep. That they, um, a sheep cares for the group. A sheep is about other people. A sheep isn't independent and say, I got mine, this is my life, and the heck with everybody else. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start judging these people. No, because there is a new creation in Jesus Christ. The very thing that God came to do. He brings us a new creation. He brings us a new identity. And that new identity just acts automatically. We do what we do because of who we are, okay? Most life is for people to try to get by, to control the sinful nature. It's done as an exchange. I will do this for you, but what are you going to do for me? I do my part, you do your part. God, and you can move it into your relationship with God. God tells me to do this. I do my part. God does his part. And he gives me heaven. But God is saying that is not the way I work. God is out to create in people a clean heart. New hearts. We are at Matthew chapter 25. We're getting at the end of this, or the, this reading of, of Matthew in the gospel. What's going to happen three uh, chapters down the road is God is going to, Jesus is going to fulfill all law, all requirements by him taking upon ourselves all of our foul-ups to not do these things. And he's going to give us a righteousness, a righteousness that's not about exchange. Do this, here's the rules, now you do your stuff. No, 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 no. The righteousness is in him. He's done it all. And so what God does is he removes all of the law. And he uh, 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 gives up his life for forgiveness for us. And what this does is it creates a new, it brings a new creation in us. Where we live our life according to his will. Where there's a new motivation. The motivation is that I don't do something to get something. We have a new identity. The goats, it's a different story. The goats will not recognize their works just like the sheep weren't because they don't recognize uh, the people that God is putting in their life. And they will also answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? He will answer them saying, truly I say, as you did it not to one of these, least of these, you did not do it for me. You know, it's almost in a sense you could say, well, that they would be saying, well, if only I knew. 
And you see this coming up in other places of the scriptures where Jesus is talking to the rich man who went away to heaven and then there was Lazarus left behind. He says, you know, only if I would have known, I could have gone back and talked and I would have done these things so I wouldn't have come to this place, which is a place of judgment, which you see coming in Matthew 25. And then he also said, Lord, let me go back to the earth and I'll warn my family. He says, you can't go back. And even if you could go back, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they're not going to listen to you. Life is an exchange. The motivation is I do something to get something. Jesus Christ has come into the world to say to all of humanity, forget it. Forget it. If you think that you're going to pull off this life, the requirements of God, it's not going to happen. So he spends three years in ministry to show us, forget it. Can that leave us in a hopeless place? I think it can. Does God want us to live in a hopeless place for the rest of our life? Uh, worried about the end of our days? No, he doesn't. What God wants to do is to take us with the good shepherd of the sheep, Jesus Christ, and go right to that cross and take a good look of what he's done for us. The fact of the matter is every human being will fail to love others and to love God. And we don't really, I think, understand the depths of our failure in this life. But we also can fail to understand the depths of the love that God has for all of us as his sheep. God desires more than anything for us to be in a relationship with him, to be the sheep of his pasture and the good shepherd that guides and loves the sheep. Amen. Okay, there are prayers for the people of God here. And so we will pray um, and ask God for compassion on the situations that people go through. Dear Heavenly Father, you don't want us to be blind in this life. You give us an understanding of who are you. And who you are is a God who loves us. And who you are is the shepherd of us, your sheep. So Father, guide all of us to be sheep. Empower us to love as we have been loved by you through your son who did something for us beyond our comprehension. The depths of our failures that we may not even know about were covered in Jesus, giving us a new identity to live a life of response to you, to care, to be concerned with those who struggle and hurt. We think of those who are in wars. We think of the Ukrainians and the Russians. We think of Hamas, the Palestinians, and the Israelis and all of the pain and suffering going on amongst these people. And dear Heavenly Father, we also bring before you those who are struggling with health issues um, and other issues. Dina Villavincencio, Janet Calvari, and Jack Keish struggling with health issues. We think of Leftu, um, who reached out to the prayer partners and asked for prayers. And all of our online community that's asking for prayers. God, we ask that you would bring peace, restoration to their lives. Into your hands do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. Okay, everybody, why did this matter here today? It mattered because what God is telling us, this is where we are all going. There is a judgment. But there's another judgment too. And that judgment went on that cross. And that judgment cleared us all of our wrongdoings and gave us a new creation, a new life. So on your life journey, um, if you are walking and you don't know about Jesus and you're, you're, you're looking into it, I say keep looking into it. Keep struggling, keep looking at texts like these to get at the bottom of understanding who are you. And I say to all of you, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you and give you his peace. Amen. And God's peace again to everybody. Uh, we want to say to you, check out our website. And there's many materials on there. We have materials with our children's corner for young children and faith development. We have our For the Curious messages, which are about one minute uh, messages and uh, on different life issues and how they relate to Jesus Christ. We also have been starting in the last couple months uh, conversations for the curious, which is uh, talking about this. So we, Doug and I will be talking about this also, this text here, and what does this mean to all of us as humans as we walk through this life. And you can go and check those out too online. So, but anyway, thank you for being with us. God's peace to you. Come back again and see us.